to sing, there's a likeness in God's mercy.
A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in details. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor, Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. From the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven must be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, I think Jesus presents us with probably the biggest challenge for us, to be merciful. Somehow, when he challenges us to love each other as he has loved us, even that may sound difficult, but it doesn't seem to make us so uncomfortable to hit us quite in the gut the way it does when he is asking or asking and demanding that we be willing to forgive. But love and mercy are always intertwined. You can't love without being merciful. You can't be merciful unless you are committed to love. So I'm fast approaching the end of my time as the safe coordinator for the Diocese of Green Bay. I'll be retiring from that position in just a couple of weeks. One of the most important things that I think that we've accomplished in my time there has been naming St. Maria Goretti the patron saint of our safe environment program. Not only is this recognition that we can only overcome something like child sexual abuse with God's help and with the prayers of the saints, because it's not just a physical battle, it's a spiritual battle that we're engaged in. But I believe that Maria so wonderfully shows us all the way to healing. If you're not familiar with Maria Gretti, you should be. When Maria Gretti was just 12 years old, she was brutally attacked by a neighbor who failed in his attempt to rape her but in his anger, he repeatedly stabbed her, left her for dead, and fled. During the assault, Maria pleaded with her attacker not to save for herself, but for her attacker to realize that he was putting his own eternal soul in peril. The horrific details of this attack speak to the reality of the total lack of love and mercy in the heart of anyone who would abuse another. But Maria showed us 
But no one can take another's dignity. God's image is still there. Harm inflicted on another does not change the reality that they are a beloved child of God. Maria was still perfect, still innocent, still beautiful in the eyes of God in spite of her many wounds. Before Maria died, she said that she wanted that one day her attacker would join her in heaven. Maria brought love and mercy to her situation. It was what she could control. It was what she could choose to do. Was that easy for her? I don't think so. Did God meet her in that moment and give her the grace to forgive? I think yes. This is what the saints do for us. They inspire us to what is possible with God. Love and mercy always continue to flow outward. After years of incarceration with no remorse, no repentance for what he had done, her attacker suddenly faced the reality of his actions. He did become a changed man, no longer bitter and angry. And he explained that his change of heart came about because Maria came to him in a dream and offered him a lily, a flower that symbolized mercy and pure love. He was eventually released from prison and he went to see Maria's mother and asked for her forgiveness for what he had done. And Maria's mother said, if my daughter can forgive him, who am I to withhold forgiveness? And so Maria's mother was also freed from any burden of anger that she might have been carrying in her heart. And her attacker, Alessandro Serenelli, later became a lay brother of the Order of Friars Minor Capuchin where he lived in a monastery and worked at his, as its receptionist and gardener until his death. Through Maria's love and mercy, and through Maria's mother's love and mercy, Alessandro found God's love and mercy. If Maria, an innocent 12-year-old child, can forgive the person who brutally attacked her, if her mother can find in Maria's act of mercy, the mercy to also forgive the person who killed her own little girl. How many of us here today can find the courage to forgive the much smaller hurts that we cling to so tightly, sometimes year upon year upon year, Mercy is the path that leads to peace. Peace in our own hearts and peace for the hearts of others because mercy always leads to love. Perhaps we can all search our hearts in this match to find a hurt that with God's help, with the prayers of the saints, with the prayers of Maria Goretti, Maybe we can finally let that hurt go. St. Maria Ready, pray for us. Please rise. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, 
sugar from sugar, begotten not made, consubstantial to the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, the kingdom of heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with his scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in one the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess from the baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mindful of the mercy we have received, we ask God's mercy on the church and the world. That the church serve as a beacon of reconciliation, leading others in the ways of harmony and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations locked in disagreement break the ancient bond of hatred and seek healing. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are burdened by the weight of resentments find solace in today's lessons of compassion and forgiveness. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this assembly mirror God's mercy in the way they care for one another. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Mary and Norbert Gillis, the intention we remember at this Mass, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions carried in our hearts, for those in the Parish Book of Intentions who are in need of our prayers, and for all of our loved ones who have died, including Mary Ann Glazer, who, was recently, who had recently entered eternal life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. We now conclude our prayers and petitions with a prayer to Saint Joseph. Good Saint Joseph, as you led the Holy Family, watch over our families. Help our family and all families to know and share God's love. In our family relationship, may we find healing and seek to be holy. May our fathers help us to become faithful disciples of Jesus, who share our love for him. As foster father of Jesus, watch over all who serve as his spiritual fathers. In a special way, bless our Holy Father, our Bishop, and our priests. May they follow your whole humble example in their other decay for the people of God, the Church. With Mary, you raised Jesus, the High Priest. You know our need for priests. Please raise up good and holy priests from our families to serve the whole people of our diocese. May our children and God's children Hear and say yes to the call of Jesus, just as you and Mary did. Good Saint Joseph, pray for us.
the year and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual purpose. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual bread. Lord, who was the way my iniquity cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the Lord's name, for our good Look with favor on our supplication, O Lord, and in your kindness accept thee, your servant's offering, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O oh, Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of fate celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the challenge of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the home of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Jude, our patron saints, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. B. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who do the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord. May the body and blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life.
let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effect and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. have a decree from our bishop. With Christian joy and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the time has come for Catholics to return to worship God at Mass on Sundays. On March 13th, 2020, I granted a dispensation from the obligation to worship at Sunday Mass during the month of March for Catholics living within the Diocese of Green Bay. A few days later, on March 17th, the public celebration of Mass was suspended throughout the diocese and the dispensation from Sunday obligation was extended indefinitely. Since that time, the faithful have not been obliged to worship at Mass on Sundays and even with the resumption of limited public worship, certain restrictions regarding the numbers and attendance have precluded the lifting of this dispensation. Now, since the dispensation from the obligation to worship at Mass on Sunday is no longer strictly necessary, the faithful will once again be moral, morally obligated to come to Mass on Sundays throughout the diocese, Canon 898. Thus, the obligation will resume on the weekend of September 19th and 20th, 2020, the 25th day in ordinary time. Since the Mass is the entering into the one and infinite sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, and thus a sacred meal by which we are spiritually nourished with his body and blood, the obligation to gather together as Christian community to worship on Sunday is a natural reflection of our faith as his disciples. Worshiping together at Mass as God's people is also beneficial both spiritually and psychologically as we support one another in our Christian lives. Thus, the healthy practice of Sunday worship is a blessing that we must continue. As has always been the case, if individual Catholics struggle with serious health concerns or are physically or morally prevented from worshiping at Mass for a grave reason, this obligation does not apply. Additionally, if individuals are frail due to illness or age or in their well-formed conscience believe that going into public places, including Sunday Mass, would place their health or the health of their loved ones in serious jeopardy, they too are not bound by this obligation. Furthermore, if the occupancy limits have already been reached at a given Mass, which precludes safe social distancing, the obligation does not apply. However, the faithful who are unable to attend Mass are nevertheless urged to make holy the Lord's Day and to pray, read the scriptures, and take parts in acts of charity. Jesus said, I am the living bread come down from heaven, Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. As Catholics, we gladly return to the altar of God to receive the bread of life from the one who gives us healing and joy to our hearts. Given at the Chancery Monday, September 7th, 2020, Bishop Most Reverend David L. Ricken. We have some additional announcements. So the St. Joseph prayer cards were handed out last week and are available again this week. These are your personal copies to keep at home. We will continue to use the worship aid to pray this prayer together following communion each Sunday. Script is available at our Quad Parish office. See the bulletin for details. Please join us for Mass at Annunciation for Our Lady of Sorrows on Tuesday, September 15th, 5.30 p.m. 
Volunteers are needed for this ministry. So please see the schedule in the sacristy to sign up. Uh, also, there are uh, there's a sign up for select spots through October. And there was a brat fry today at St. Joseph, um, and it will be tomorrow as well from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks God. be to God. Our closing hymn is Blessed Be the Lord.